I'd like to take this opportunity to ask if there was another update that you could give us about the event that we've spoken about previously. You have noticed since the last time we did speak on this matter that there has been a split forming. Much as you have been told, there would be two worlds. Very predictable split. And we have also watched it happen. There are those who are taking the information of the word of the event, as we spoke before, and are running off thinking about what wonderful, magical things could happen in the banking industry, in the distribution of amazing amounts of money. There are those who take the words the event and start speaking about massive changes in government, thousands of arrests and prosecutions being made. Now, we are not telling you that none of that will happen. What we are telling you is that, that the event is not what we were describing to you at all. And now coming forward and speaking to you, writing to you on your computers, are those who are describing past occurrences which are, for them, the event. They are describing for you in much more detail even than I gave what it is like to pass through the event. And the information has been there all along that this process could occur for any one of you at any time and has occurred for some and will occur for more. It is, after all, an inner thing, a consciousness thing, an individual thing. But when we were speaking to you in this venue, I like that word, when we were speaking to you in this venue about the event, we were speaking of that type of spiritual conscious transformation occurring for many, many people at the same time as the changes in energy, the changes in energy is consciousness. It has intelligence. And so we're using several words to describe the same thing, but as their energy rises, as their consciousness expands, they will reach by their own doing and by what is being sent to them in a manner of speaking, sent to all of you, they will reach a tipping point, which term we have also used before. And it will cause the veils in their consciousness to lift. Another term that we have used many times before. And they will see and know and experience what and who they are. We've used that before. The oneness, we have used that before. They will pass into this and become this. And as we spoke, they will come back out of it. Much in the manner as those who have spoken to you of their near-death experiences. They come back and they live their lives forever changed, forever changed. As we spoke, their priorities will be totally different. Things which were of no import to them before will be extremely important to them. Things which were their be-all and end-all before will be of no consequence because they will know the truth. Even though they may only experience it a few more times in their lives, they will know it. This is the event of which we spoke. And this event will cause the changes which you truly desire in your world, will it not? Just still trying to wrap my head around all the experiences and possibilities that this will bring. Um, you had mentioned about the Christ consciousness coming through or back or here. Um, can you discuss that a little bit more, a little deeper even than, than we have in the past? The Christ consciousness is the consciousness that we were just speaking of. It is not separate from you, nor is it separate from any other. You are not separate from any other. You perceive of yourselves as separate from me. You perceive of Christ consciousness as separate from you. You perceive of different aspects of consciousness 
as being separate from each other, as in, if we may, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, as in, well, all of your different religions put names on different aspects of consciousness. Shakti, Shiva, Brahman, all of them. Oh, the Greeks and the Egyptians had real fun with that, did they not? All named just aspects of consciousness. And you do the same. You have Raphael and Gabriel and Michael and Azrael and all your favorite angels. All aspects of consciousness. And you name aspects of consciousness Jim and Jose and Rosalind and Mary. All just aspects of consciousness. It is not that Christ is going to descend upon your world. It is that your world is going to open up to the existence and presence of Christ. I hope that clarifies it somewhat. So people will be experiencing this both individually, but yet there's still going to be a uniformed experience um, that the masses will feel at once. Is that right? It is. Just like anything else, if three people experience it, there will be five descriptions of it. If 3,000 people experience it, there will be 10,000 descriptions of it. You cannot describe it. The most common description of it will be, I can't describe it. <laughs> and yet, when you walk into a room and meet someone who has had that experience, you will both know immediately. You will know. You will not have to describe it to each other. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. It does. Well, and it, what I have found fascinating since we started releasing this information about the event are the many, many emails and letters and messages that Ron and I are receiving from people all over the world who are describing very similar things what we've been talking about here. Um, you know, one lady wrote into the blog about um, this happening to her a few years ago. She wasn't seeking it. She wasn't expecting it. It just happened in the blink of an eye. And her ability to know things that she wouldn't commonly be able to understand, just being there in her brain and, and being able to take it in was one of the examples that she gave after this, um, the access of information was um, no longer blocked with her. So I guess what I'm seeing from all of these responses from people is that it looks a little bit different to each person, of course, and I'm sure people are, you know, anticipating and putting the energy out towards that great flash of light, but I also think perhaps taking this information and, and delving within ourselves to find that special experience, um, our individual experiences, is probably more well sought than watching the sky for the big flash of light. Um, what would you say to that? Well, I would say that whatever progress you can make in your present situation will only enhance your experience when it occurs. You've made much more progress than you know you have. You're only measuring from your remembered childhood to this point where you have existed and made progress much longer than that. And you are not taking into consideration the other yous which exist in whatever time or whatever place at this time. And you say in your mind, this person who wrote you has already experienced this. That person has already experienced this. That brings up two things. The first reaction is, why haven't I? Not taking into account, if we may confuse you a little further, that you have. That person, or the other person, or a third person, may very well be another aspect of yourself. It is certainly another memory, uh, another member of your soul family. At this point, in what is, in quotes, going on, and quotes, at this point in what is going on, 
you are contacting and being contacted by many, many members of your soul family. You came here to do this thing and you are doing it. And some of them, maybe not that particular person, but some of those you are coming in contact with are other yous. And there are other aspects of you on our side of your veil. And they are working just as hard toward what we are accomplishing as you are. And many of those who hear these words, and many who feel the energy that we are placing into these words, should realize that they would not have the, may we call them, assignments that they have, nor the strength to accomplish them, nor the ability to realize that being where they are and doing what they're doing, although maybe not of seeming earth-shattering import is necessary to bring this about. I will tell you this, if you are listening to this now, you are where you are and you are doing what you are doing and you are dreaming the dream you are dreaming because you were honored enough and valued enough to be sent to where you are when no one else could do what you are doing in the manner you are doing it. Your favorite question to us is, am I on my path? Am I doing what I should be doing? That's why you're there. That is your path. Are you doing what you, yes, you are doing what you should be doing. And a choice will occur for you tomorrow or an hour from now. And you will make that choice. And you'll wonder again, am I doing what I should be doing? Yes. And more especially, if you have begun to do what we have counseled you to do and make your decision, from your heart place. Make your decision asking, is this joyful? Is this true for me? When you are acting from that part of your consciousness, your, what you call your heart, you are absolutely on your path. You are absolutely doing what you should be doing. And so rather than worry about it, rejoice in it. You are honored. Well, thank you very, very much for that update. Look forward to the next.